on this session uh, we'll take you through the making of this particular scene uh, this is something which I've created using 3ds max V-Ray, and multi scatter so on this basically I was testing the possibilities of using multi scatter and a scene something like this this is something which could take a day time to create it's not very complicated and everything is um, uh, simple here but uh, this is something I could uh, try out something beautiful in uh, in multi scatter and V-Ray. so uh, I'll, I'll take you to the scene uh, 3ds max scene basically there's a final render output after post I have uh, I have uh, scattered all these uh, plants and trees using uh, multi scatter and even the rocks and uh, this is uh, I'll talk about floor generator to create something like a pathway like this uh, and this is I used to very atmospheric effects to cre create these volume effects volume fog so I'll come to the scene I'll take to 3ds max okay this is a scene uh, which is uh, which is which is the what you have seen as rendered okay okay so the first we'll talk about the creation of these planks and I have I have used a simple script to uh, do this uh, I haven't manually created these I'll introduce you to floor generator which is uh, something free from a site called cgsource.com you can uh, see its tutorials and how it works uh, it's called floor generator so it's basically used to create a uh, wooden flooring and but I have used it uh, here to create these pathway in the forest so as uh, that is so you may create any uh, these guys this is a script you can uh, run the script and go to just max script and just say uh, run the script can just um, just close this, close this and, uh, script run script and go to I have it in D drive I guess go to the script so once you load the script uh, you can use any uh, spline objects and select any of the spline objects and say that you want to create a uh, floor and uh, you may uh, set the properties accordingly it's like length and width so consider I give a length of 50 and say update uh, there's nothing and just say 10 update so you can see that I uh, get a update according to the uh, according to the requirements I can tweak maybe and and create something which is useful as if now you, you can see that it's so huge for comparing to this scene so I may reduce extrude and even reduce the bevel to get something which is close for my looking uh, I can even create tiles or uh, its use is basically wooden flooring I use it for many purposes so I have uh, used here is the same planks without uh, with a high width so I could get something like this so this is what I have used there to create these planks and this are not manually created and the same way I have used uh, a multi texture for this I I, ha I need required a variation in the texture I don't want to put the same wood all all through so what I did is uh, there is a package coming along with this same CG source that is a uh, uh, multi texture map which is uh, I would get pieces of uh, wood textures so I have used the same multi texture to uh, texture it so uh, you may use uh, take my material picker and uh, use this multi texture that's a free plugin again it's available so you may use uh, multi texture it's a free uh, plugin available again in CG source you may use this uh, to create the wood and I'll just take very material and connect this to uh, diffuse lot and what I do is I'll pick up some CG source I'll pick some of these uh, uh, textures it's basically uh, a lot of pieces it's it's rather than a single texture I have a lot of piece of textures like uh, planks separately 
tick and so uh, what I could do with this plugin is I could load all of them together so I have loaded like say uh, 10 or 15 textures together so I can I can get the variation in the wood so I have used all these textures together uh, so uh, according to the material ID it will distribute automatically so I will have different material IDs by this floor generator so based on the material ID this distributes the textures based on the material ID and even I could create variations here I could just say I'll just pick another texture it's So if I wanted a, a gamma variation, I could say randomly have uh, textures which has different gamma variation. Uh, same way even I can have textures which has little hue variations. So um, I this much is not preferable obviously. So I could have textures of different hue or saturation variations and so it wouldn't look as like a, a very uh, very plain so I'll have some details and some variations that will look more natural that's what even in this scene is that the woods have little variations in patterns and all those things so I have used this technique to create this coming back to 3ds max and then the rest of is mostly uh, a different multi scatter uh, so uh, I have uh, another session which introduces to multi scatter so first thing is I'll switch off all the multi scatter can refer in my YouTube channel you can find another video which gives an introduction to multi scatter I'll switch off all these I have uh, I think many in the scene still one more the scene is very simple there is nothing and most of these objects are not renderable I have disabled uh, I have disabled its rendering property so it's not renderable so it wouldn't see in the render so all these things are rendered is switched off these objects are uh, this is uh, scene most of these objects are not renderable which is just uh, even these object if you click it it's not renderable so it is just to uh, placeholder for uh, the the trees or plants so what I have uh, did here is I have imported uh, some rocks okay, a group of rocks and uh, some very basic uh, objects and I have some random plants here so you can see that I have some various plants over here and okay so the first thing is uh, I have used uh, surface scattering as well as the spline scattering I have have two splines here on the left and right of this pathway so what I did is I have added uh, rocks as well as some plants on both sides of pathways you can see that I have a line of rocks here I have and so uh, I have uh, my first um, I just have to see now which one is for rocks yeah. I have a first series of this one which is scattered through this spline object so you can see that if I just expand it so you can see that uh, this is scattered through my uh, spline surface so this is line so I have my rocks okay which is on both these sides you can see that it's both the sides you have these rocks the same way I have uh, plants on both sides I think if I switch this on So same way I have used the spline again to populate these plants on the sides of this. It's only on those splines I'll get these plants. So okay, that was a second uh, multi scatter, and the third was uh, to create some rocks on these. So uh, so I have here in the picture you could see that I have a cluster of rocks over here. This is created using this. I have a spear on the spear I have some rocks and uh, to get a randomness all these things I have uh, uh, ha have a randomization I have randomized the scale and all those features so I'll have various variations in scale rotation and uh, all those things so I'll I'll not have the similar kind of rocks and I even I have here l um, much number of rocks so they randomly pick these rocks 
okay and and it's uh, I have something for plants again and then diary area and this is uh, trees I have big trees here on the outside uh, big trees I have added uh, trees over here and this is another multi scatter which is again trees on these areas and I have a V-ray plane that cover the entire area so I have a ground texture that uh, that covers the entire area so the other objects are not renderable basically this very plane gives me the ground plane okay and that's it then uh, then next to it so lighting is very simple I have a V-ray V-ray sun okay I have used a V-ray sun with um, basic parameters and uh, along with V-ray sky um, it is a, a very small intensity what I have done is to get the atmospheric effects that, uh, that I have rendered a uh, a separate uh, pass of uh, fog that is V-ray fog I have used this is the fog I have generated in a V-ray fog so it's, that's also very simple to create so if you go to uh, my environments or effects so um, I have an en V-ray environmental fog you can add it anytime an environmental fog and I have connected the environment fog to my V-ray sun so that's the only light I have in this scene. I have used the normal V-ray in direct illumination technique. That is, um, I have used a radiance map and brute force for this. Mm. So, so I have the basic uh, basic settings. I have only just changed a couple of things like this. That's I have increased the fog distance to reduce the fog a little, and I have a higher number of um, uh, samples here. I have subdivisions here increase so that I'll get a little more um, uh, what is uh, softer and smoother one with not much noise so uh, based on the quality you required you may increase uh, subdivisions of this V-ray fog and I have connected this to as, well, as already told I have connected this to sky, the sun so I would get uh, the fog from the same direction of it and I have rendered uh, a, this into uh, as element so that again in render setup uh, you could uh, separate this as I have taken a C depth pass as well as a very atmosphere pass so this atmosphere pass carries uh, the fog because it's an uh, atmospheric element so I could uh, take it as a pass separately so I, I, I didn't uh, so detailly took passes I have a uh, color pass and I have a fog separately taken and I have a C depth pass and that is I can could do some depth of field effects okay so I, I had collected quite, quite a lot of reference so that I can uh, I can just understand how it how this how these structures are so how I could light it uh, so I have collected pretty much uh, some references which looks good so these are the initial references and ideas for uh, this particular scene this I took a one day time to create this uh, to experiment and create this this is the final render. Uh, 